What's going on guys, Andrew Pillock Hockey here back with another video and today it is the Toronto Maple Leafs NHL trade deadline preview. Now, as you guys know, I am a huge Toronto Maple Leafs fan, you can see it up here, you guys know from this channel, from my my sweater, the pillow there, like everything, literally that blue blanket, everything is Toronto Maple Leafs about me, I love the Leafs. I do talk about all NHL teams, so if you'd like to subscribe, please do so. But today I'm going to be going through all of the latest rumors with the Toronto Maple Leafs and kind of giving a preview because it is the 19th and the NHL trade deadline is on the 25th. So at the time of making this video, nothing has happened, obviously, except for the Muzzin trade. But um, we'll discuss that briefly, and as I'm recording this, something could happen. So if I can't predict the future if something happens, but we're going to go through everything, the cap, the players that they could get, players that they shouldn't go after, and we're going to be realistic here. We're not going to just say, oh, well, they're going to go after um, Zuccarello, then they're going to get Simmons. Like, no, like, we're going to be realistic here, look at some cheaper options, and once that makes sense, we're going to go through the cap, all of it. So, um, I decided to do this here because it's in front of my computer as well. It makes sense. Anyways, let's go through a bit of a timeline. Of course, the rumor started as far back as the William Nylander saga, where we were supposed to get a defenseman from Carolina, a defenseman from St. Louis. That ship has sailed. We've kept Nylander, which is the right thing to do. He's going to continue to get better, and he has been very good lately. Then we heard the rumors of, is Kapanen and Janssen going to get traded for a defenseman from Carolina, from St. Louis, from uh, Philadelphia, from everywhere? That's not happening because the Leafs are talking with Kapanen right now, and I'm sure they're trying to get something done with Janssen. Fast forward a little bit, we have the Jake Muzzin trade. Toronto traded their 2019 first round selection, and they traded uh, defenseman prospect Sean Dursey. He was unsigned. I'm not sure if he signed uh, with the Kings yet, but he was an unsigned prospect. Very good, playing with the Guelph Storm of the OHL right now. Very, very good. That's my hometown team. Uh, and as well as Carl Grundstrom, a, re a very good player from the Toronto Marlies who probably would have had a chance to be a Toronto Maple Leaf next year with the bit of turnover of the roster next season. So that trade has kind of worked out. It worked out very good at first, but Mike Babcock has, Babcock has gone back to his original pairings with Ron Hainsey and Morgan Riley, which isn't very good. I expect Muzzin to get back up there, uh, and I also expect that Kyle Dubas will probably have a conversation with him regarding that, uh, especially if he's going to pick somebody else up. I think that the defensive pairings need to be Riley and Muzzin, along with uh, Gardner, Dermott, and then have one of Hainsey or Zaitsev on the bottom pairing uh, with a newly acquired defenseman or maybe a Marley's call-up. I don't believe that um, they should be playing both of Hainsey and Zaitsev, but again, that's we're going to keep discussing that. Anyways, the Muzzin trade was a huge trade for the Leafs, and it showed that they were really willing to go all in. Now, Here's something that a lot of people are very confused about. If you're not a Toronto Maple Leafs fan, or maybe you are a Toronto Maple Leafs fan, I want to educate you a little bit on um, what the, the Toronto Maple Leafs cap uh, is right now. Because a lot of people uh, expect that the Leafs just don't have any uh, cap space right now, uh, and that's actually not true at all. Uh, technically, at the deadline, they have quite a bit of space. They have uh, probably around $4 million that they'd like to work with. Uh, they have a little bit more than that, uh, but that's probably the realistic number that they're going to work with. Now, uh, going into next season, they do have only about $7 million in projected cap space, but that will go up with contracts being off of the books. Um, probably a couple trades as well as um, LTIR usage for Nathan Horton. So that, that number will go up as well as the cap is going to go up. Uh, they have to sign Mitch Marner, Andreas Janssen, Kasperi Kapanen, uh, Tyler Ennis is a UFA. I'm not sure if they want to keep uh, him. Uh, Igor Ozhiganov, Ron Hainsey, who will probably be gone. Uh, Garrett Sparks, who will probably get a pretty low contract to begin with. Uh, and Michael Hutchinson, who's buried in the minors. So, uh, in regards to cap hit, the Leafs actually do have some cap to work with at the trade deadline. So, if they did want to pick somebody up, they can do so. Uh, they have their 2020 and 2021 first round draft picks. Now, Kyle Dubas has been open saying that he will not acquire a rental by giving up a first round pick. We do know Jake Muzzin has a contract for next season as well. So, 
that four million dollars for a top four defenseman for next season. That's why he was willing to put the first in that deal. Sorry if there's a noise in the background. Every time I film, that turns on. It's almost like it's like ha ha ha. I'm turning on whenever you start to film, and it really ticks me off. Anyways, the Leafs have their second for the next three years. They have their third for the next three years. They've got a couple fourth round picks this year and a couple fourths uh, for the next couple seasons. And you know the picks go on and on. They have multiple seventh uh, seventh round picks uh, next season. And so they've got picks to work with if they wanted to. They've also stated that they will not be giving up Timothy Liljegren or Rasmus Sandin for a rental or they just don't want to give them up. And I would imagine that Andreas Janssen and Kasperi Kapanen will not be available because they want to, you know, have a deep team going into the playoffs. And again, it depends on what kind of player that's being offered towards you. Uh, but if I'm being realistic, I don't think any more first round picks will be dealt unless it's for a guy that has a lot of term. I also don't believe uh, a lot of a lot of the roster players will be traded. I think that the only one that I could see getting moved to move out salary is Connor Brown, even though I like him. And on defense, I know a lot of people would like to see Zaitsev moved. Uh, the only guys that I would move if I was a GM would be Zaitsev or Hainsey, but because Babcock likes those guys, they're probably not going anywhere. Um, and in goal, nobody's probably moving. But um, what I was gonna getting to was the fact that the Leafs just don't want to trade any of their Marlies guys right now unless it makes sense. Like their top picks, of course. If the right deal comes about, they'll have to make do with uh, what they've got. Before I start this, a lot of people are going to expect that I'm going to be talking about Carolina's blue line. I don't believe that they're going to be trading pieces as they're a team that's looking to make the playoffs and they've played well as of late. And it's the same thing with the St. Louis Blues, who we do play tonight. Uh, it's the 19th, so if you're watching this before the game, go Leafs go. Hopefully they beat the Blues, who have won 10 in a row, if I'm uh, correct with my numbers. But So... I won't be talking about Carolina's defenseman. I don't believe that they want to do that. But let's get uh, some names that have been tossed around and names that I feel um, make sense. Now, the reason I said Zaitsev and Brown is because I believe that both of them are overpaid. Brown is slightly overpaid, while Zaitsev is way overpaid um, because he's not playing the role that you would expect him to. He's got a contract till the 2023-24 season, and he's got a modified no trade that kicks in, I believe, July 1st. Uh, next season, or is it this? Yeah, it should be this July 1st. So if the Leafs are going to move him, it would be now. His AAV is 4.5 million. That's not good. Same thing with Brown. He's just over 2 million, I believe. I think the Leafs want to move on from that. So that's why I brought those names up. Anyways, let's look at some potential trade uh, pieces that the Leafs could acquire at the deadline. The first one I wanted to talk about, and I'll try to be brief with everyone because this video would be way too long if I gave an in-depth view on all of them, but the first one is Nick Jensen from the Detroit Red Wings. He's a right uh, defenseman. Uh, his cap hit right now is $812,500, so not a ton, and it's a rental type of deal, so uh, that would be a pretty good solid pickup for the Leafs. Six foot, uh, right, shoots right, again, that's very good, 28 years old, nothing too crazy. Uh, this season right now, he's got 15 points and 15 nine games played so pretty solid numbers and defensively his advanced numbers look pretty good I would be interested to see Nick Jensen on the Leafs and I think he'd be a good option the next option is Radko Gudis again from the blue line right-handed shot defenseman a bit tough that he likes to hit uh, current half a cap cap hit is 3.35 million dollars and he's got a contract next season as well so he would cost a little bit more when it comes to you know the trade itself 28 years old as well uh, and right now he has 13 points in 57 games played but he is uh, a plus 11 which is quite good on the uh, Philadelphia Flyers and I believe Jensen's a plus one this year and the and the Red Wings haven't been too great but Gudis or Jensen would be my top two options uh, and I think that it would be really good. Now the next option is a guy that I really don't want the Leafs to go after but his name has been in the rumors is Adam McQuaid. I know he's tough but this guy is a very very depth defenseman. Sixth or seventh guy and you have guys like Justin Hall who you could call up who is much cheaper and would do a much better job. His cap hit is $2.7 million right now. Um, I just don't see why this would make sense. 32 years old, uh, has 5 points in 34 games played. I just don't think it would make any sense. The reason I'm bringing this up is because apparently Bob McKenzie thinks that the Leafs are linked to him, but he said this. Real hard rock, more of a depth defenseman. Like I said, more of a 5-6-7 guy. So, uh, and Jeff Viet, who does a lot of work for the Marlies and Leafs like on his own time, 
basically said that he would be the 12th best defenseman on the Leafs depth chart, so it does not make any sort of sense for the Leafs to go after him unless they're looking for just extended depth. He would probably be in the press box, I'm not going to lie. Uh, I just don't understand why that would make sense. If I was to pick one of those defensemen to pick up, I would honestly get Gudis. I think it would be a very solid pickup, but if you could get Jensen, uh, again, very, very good. Moving over to a couple forwards, I don't believe the Leafs are really in the market for a forward, but we should uh, at least take a flyer uh, if, if they're doing that. Uh, Michael Furland from the Carolina Hurricanes is a guy that I think the Leafs would have to overpay a little bit for, uh, but it would kind of make sense. He's, I know Carolina's been trying to hold him back a little bit, and by no means do I think that this is a guarantee that the Leafs uh, would be interested in him, and I don't believe that it's a guarantee that he'd get traded. But it'd be interesting to see. His cap hit is 1.75 million dollars right now uh, left-handed shot 26 years old his contract is running up after this season he'll be a UFA but this season he has 33 points in 50 games so he's having a really good season uh, for a guy that's getting paid that much and I think that a lot of teams will be interested in him I don't think it'll be the Leafs uh, another guy that would be tied has been tied to the Leafs is Wayne Simmons. His cap hit is $3.975 million. He's the alternate captain right now of the Philadelphia Flyers. 30 years old, right-handed shot, tough just like Furland. Uh, he, he'll be a UFA, uh, and he has a modified no-trade clause as well. Um, He's got 27 points in 59 games played, kind of underwhelming, and a lot of teams apparently aren't willing to overpay for Wayne Simmons. If people have been paying attention to the trade rumor market, even though the Flyers have been doing uh, well as of late, uh, it seems as though they are willing to give up some guys. Uh, and Simmons wants a long-term deal and the Flyers want to give him short-term, but they're also not really getting any big trade offers for him because he's kind of been underperforming. But in a playoff scenario, I think Furland or Simmons would be good. Uh, I just happen to think the Leafs won't be able to get one of those guys. Uh, I think that depth is important, but I think the Leafs have a lot of forwards and they should be okay. Uh, and again, getting back to the depth defenseman, I wonder if the Leafs would be interested in Jay Bomeister as a super depth type of guy who has experience, who isn't uh, as bad as Adam McQuaid in my eyes. But again, another guy that I don't believe would get enough ice time uh, to play with the Toronto Maple Leafs. If I was to make a prediction right now, I think the Leafs are going to pick up Nick Jensen. I don't even want to talk about um, Glenn Denning from the Detroit Red Wings. I don't think it makes any sense for them to get him as a center depth. They like I would rather have literally anybody play in that spot he's overpaid I don't think he's very good and he's overrated defensively I don't think he does much uh, and that's no disrespect to him but the Leafs need to stick to picking up a defenseman Gudis or Jensen would be unreal I think it'd be awesome if they got one of Furland or Simmons for a, a cheap price I wouldn't mind but if you're gonna spend spend it on a defenseman so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video I didn't want to go too crazy long with this those are the names that I think the Leafs should be interested in and names that have they, they have been linked to before uh, I stayed away from the Carolina stuff because I think that they're gonna be done when it comes to their defensemen maybe not even trading Furland. Uh, same thing with St. Louis. They're just playing real good right now. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to leave your trade suggestions down below. Leafs fans, make sure you click that like button. Also, if you're just a fan of the video or the NHL, just click the like button. I'd really appreciate that. Subscribe if you're new. Again, that would help me so much. Please do so. And make sure to click that notification bell as well so you're notified for all my videos or streams. Lots of stuff coming up uh, towards the NHL trade deadline. Lots of videos and streams coming up. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video or stream. Peace.